yeah it's that time of the year again hi everyone if you're new here I mean obviously they're new here what do you mean if they're new here hi I'm Arin Bhatia I'm a final year software engineering student at the University of Sydney I was the first recipient of the Sydney Scholars India 100% scholarship and I've been working as a software engineer ever since I was in second year of uni in this video I'll be sharing my five point plan to achieve my goals in 2023 however if you're not interested in finding out how a 21 year old plans to make it to the top then it's pretty fair honestly like wishing you and your family Merry Christmas and a very happy new year so without further ado let's get started with number one habits over goals it is very easy to set big goals I'm someone who's very ambitious and I often set big goals However, I do understand that I won't be able to achieve them without consistency. I came across this concept for the first time through the infamous book Atomic Habits by James Clear. The idea is simple. Tiny gains are extremely powerful and if you make a consistent effort to improve bit by bit every day, then it will compound over the entire year to generate immaculate results. There are some good habits that I have developed like working out and meditation and I would like to continue those this year. There are also some habits that I'd want to work on, like reading and journaling. The way I'm planning to approach this is using a framework I like to call EHOC, which is Easy Habits Obnoxious Goals. So what I do basically is I set up obnoxious goals so that I'm always motivated and I never settle. On the other hand, the actual habits that I implement to achieve that goal start off extremely simple. For example, last year was probably the year I read the most in my life and I probably read like three or four books. Now, I want to get into the habit of reading. So say I set a goal of reading 52 books this year, that is a book a week. Now that is something that I'm not going to succeed at considering my poor reading habits. If I keep this 52 books a year as the end goal at the back of my head and start off with something simple like saying I'm going to read 12 books this year, which is a book a month. Now this is a lot more realistic and it is something that I can actually succeed at to help ensure that I get into the habit of reading. This is a lot better than setting unreal expectations, then failing miserably and then quitting. However, always remembering that goal of 52 books a year will help me push even when I hit 12 books this year and ensure that I don't get complacent. Most of my end goals are obnoxious and the reason for that is that I don't want to tell my brain that this is its maximum potential. I don't want to think like that. I'm optimistic that if I give it my everything over a long period of time, then I can achieve anything. And I think that is true for everyone. Even if it is not true, now a lot of people might come at me here, but I don't think there's any harm in self-hypnotizing yourself into believing it that, yeah, I'm not on top of this shit yet, but I'm that guy though. Now in my industry of technology, programming and software, it is very common to see new tools and frameworks come up like literally every month. And the way you stay on top is by constantly learning and evolving your skill set. Now, I can only speak for my industry. This might be true for other ones as well, so you might relate to this. But what I sort of want to do is expand my mindset of constantly learning to beyond just software. And the way I plan to do this is by setting aside time on the weekends to learn something that is not software, whether that's my side hustle, business, communication, human relations, or even golf. And while doing all of this, I want to ensure that I document everything. And I'm going to do this using YouTube and Notion. I will use Notion more for personal tracking. I have set up various boards with clear goals, plans for YouTube videos, my reading list, courses, etc. I won't be able to deliver on all these different things that I'm planning to achieve if I'm disorganized or not managing my time well. Hence, the goal is to put systems in place using Notion. These YouTube videos, on the other hand, will help me share my journey with the world and develop a personal brand. The goal is to connect with like-minded people on the platform who are on the same path because that would create a sense of accountability and forced learning. I'll know that I have to post a video to update my audience on the progress. And if I don't make any progress, then I don't have any video to post because my content is my journey and everything I learn along the way. Additionally, being comfortable in front of a camera is probably one of the most useful skills a person can have in today's time. And that is something I wish to work on. I absolutely love making these videos and I'm pretty passionate about this channel. So yeah, I see this overall as a good way to learn new stuff, <laughs> even if it is for the sake of content. Number four is having the right environment. Now, it is pretty obvious that your environment plays a huge role in your productivity and your overall mindset. I'll ensure that my place of work, that is my desk and my room are always clean so that my mind is not foggy. I'll keep myself well-groomed, healthy, eat the right food, cut down on alcohol. And most importantly, I'll make sure that I'm surrounded by the right people. I'm sure we have all heard the saying that we are the average of the five people closest to us. And I think that is one of the most accurate sayings of all time. 
If you've reached this far in the video, then at this point, you're probably wondering, when is he going to share his goals? I mean, he even blurred out the Notion page. So what is up? What does he exactly want to achieve? Now, that blends in perfectly into the fifth and final point, And that is, I don't plan to share my goals with anyone. Some might say your goals are too far-fetched. You're only 21. Anyways, I'm not willing to take that risk of not being able to differentiate between a person who is actually on my side and who is on my side superficially. However, apart from my personal trust issues, there is actually a scientific study supporting this claim. In 2009, Peter Goldwitzer of the New York University conducted a study on a group of law students who were extremely committed to their educational opportunities. These highly committed students were then divided into two groups. The first group was the one that made their commitment very public and they actually got an examiner to acknowledge that commitment. And the second group was the one that kept their commitment anonymous. They were then given 45 minutes to work on legal cases. And guess what? The first group actually spent less time working as compared to the second group. Researchers concluded that when someone notices your identity goal, then that social recognition acts as a reward that may cause you to reduce your efforts. So in this case, the students who publicly announced their commitment to become lawyers developed that identity in their head already, thanks to the examiner's acknowledgement. Therefore, even positive feedback in a way could be bad for you. So I've just decided to keep my goals to myself. That way I'm away from negative views. I'm also away from premature praise or social validation that actually might cause me to get complacent. Thank you all for watching. Once again, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you and your families. If you like this one, then make sure you leave a like and also let me know how you plan to achieve your goals in the comments down below. I'm also extremely open to feedback on the content, whether positive or negative, because as I stated before, I'm not a guru. I'm on this journey with you. I'll see you at the top.